Hi, John Turner here, one of the pastors at Northwest Christian Church with my newest book, How to Deal with Change, only $19.95, not available in stores. It's a good reason it's not available in stores, because it doesn't exist. It shouldn't exist. Not that long ago, I would have told you that I'm the last person that should be giving advice about dealing with change, let alone write a book about it. I dislike change. I loathe change. Yeah, I hated change. Always have. Always wanted things to be the same as they always had been. Familiar. I like knowing what to expect, to be able to count on the people and things that were there for me. I remember one day like it was yesterday. It was way back in September of 1969. Yes, I'm old. After seven years at James Monroe Elementary School, that was kindergarten through sixth grade back then, where I had just one teacher each year and knew just about everyone in my grade, I was heading off to my first day at Cecil B. DeMille Junior High School. It was a big school. Instead of one teacher, I'd have six. There were students from six different elementary schools all thrown together. To top it off, I heard about some of the things that the older kids did to the new kids at the school, like take them out behind the baseball field backstop, hold them down and smear lipstick all over their faces. I just knew this was to be my fate. I walked down the front steps of my house, took a few steps across the yard, turned around to head back to the house. But mom was standing there on the porch, pointing down the street, go, she said. I turned around, made it almost all the way to the sidewalk and turned around again, go, she said a little more forcefully. I turned around and made the three quarter mile death march to school. Junior high school was not the most pleasant three years of my life. I did my best to stay away from Dan Walsh and Frank Herrick, but it wasn't always successful. I had the lowest grades of my student career in the seventh and eighth grade. My grades rebounded a bit in the ninth, but I would have preferred to skip junior high and go straight to high school. Now, 42 years later, it seems I may finally be getting better about dealing with change. We've all been forced to face a lot of change the last year and a half. We haven't been able to do the things we've always, the way we've always done things. After spending 29 of the previous 30 spring breaks with our high school students in Mexico, we haven't gone the last two years. Our church bus sat in the parking lot for over a year. When we were able to go out, we practiced social distancing. We went to church online, had to put masks over our faces, to go just about anywhere. Devastating fires swept through our state. Last September, as the fire up on Shehala Mountain made its way toward our house, my wife and I loaded up the dogs and a few irreplaceable items and spent two nights in our RV parked in our daughter's driveway. At least three people I know personally died from the COVID-19 virus. Yet through it all, much of the time, underneath my mask, I've had a big smile on my face. I've come to realize that I'm not the one in control. God is. He always has been. He always will be. In Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, we read, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And by the way, I don't know anyone that was held down and had lipstick smeared on their face in junior high school.